President Biden plans to replace the credit bureaus. This is basically the talk that's that's going around in our industry. So we'll basically talk about this, if this is true or not. Uh, we'll debunk this myth, plus a whole lot more on today's episode of The Joe Credit Show. So does President Biden plan to get rid of the credit bureaus? Well, some folks in uh, the industry believe so. Um, and, and, and to basically give them credit, it's not really like veterans that are in our industry. They, they know better. They're, they're people that think they know information about credit or think they know what they're talking about or read a couple headlines and they're this uh, so-called influencer on social media. They just talk about stuff. A lot of it's not factually based. And, and, and of course, this information spreads. And this is how a lot of information you know, gets spread. And so uh, our misinformation gets spread. I hope I said that correctly. And so this is one of the things that some people are talking about right now is that you know President Biden plans to get rid of the credit bureaus. And so fact check, mostly false. There is a little truth uh, to this, but uh, it is mostly false. And uh, the reason why is because the administration has been talking about, you know, creating a government controlled credit reporting agency or bureau, if you will. But there really is not any, any mention of getting rid of the other three or the other reporting agencies that exist. This is really something to be kind of, uh, you know, as an option or basically a competitor of the three main reporting agencies. So this is actually not really true. There's no plans to get rid of the reporting agencies that exist today. Uh, this is basically trying to create an alternative uh, to, to the options that currently exist. And so what's all involved with this new bureau that they're wanting to create? What, what is it? consist of? What does it look like? So let's talk about that real quick. So one of the things that this new bureau uh, plans to do is to accept alternative forms of payment data. Uh, you know, alternative data would be things like rental history, utility payments, uh, like gas, water bills, electric bills, cell phone bills, things like that. That's known as alternative data because it's not the traditional forms of data that gets collected and reported to, to your credit reports, such as credit cards, loans, mortgages, student loans, things like that. That's more of the traditional uh, forms of data that gets collected and, and you know, reported to the credit reporting agencies on your behalf. Um, so alternative data is gonna be the other, the other stuff, right? And this isn't really new. This, is, this, is, this has been around for, for quite some time. Um, you know, many of the reporting agencies kind of knew alternative data would be, you know, probably the future or something to really consider. So they've been doing this for quite some time. Uh, Experian being one of them, we all know Experian. So Experian is, is one of the reporting agencies that is already doing this. So that's that's the, their new product called Experian Boost. This helps get, uh, you know, data reported on your, on your Experian credit report from rental history to utilities um, to, well, mostly utilities. And this will be on your Experian report only, not on the other three, not on the other two, Equifax or TransUnion, only Experian. And uh, this will be considered in the newer versions of FICO, FICO 8 and, and newer. Um, and so that data will be scored under, under you know, most, most recent versions of FICO, which again, most lenders aren't using, but you know, it is scorable data. The data is collected. These are alternative forms of data. So there's not really nothing new with alternative data. In fact, you know, Experian's not the only one. They're probably one of the, the, the later bureaus to, to adapt using alternative data or collecting alternative data. There's been, there's, there's several different credit reporting agencies that collect alternative data. So for example, there's check systems. So check systems will collect banking data, right? So all your checking accounts you've ever opened, uh, any checking accounts that have gone bad uh, or have gone in default in the past um, is gonna be reported to the check systems credit reporting agency. Um, and then you have uh, LexisNexis. So LexisNexis is actually a very large reporting agency, very hidden, not, not really talked about a lot, but LexisNexis collects just about everything about you, all your emails, every address you've ever lived at, people you've known, uh, it's a lot of data which is collected by LexisNexis. So alternative data is not, not really new, it, it's, it's been around. So the Biden administration plans to, with this new bureau, have a bureau that says, hey, we collect you know, alternative payment data. Again, not new, it's been around for a while, uh, but that's one of the things that they plan to do. So another thing that, they, that this new bureau plans to do is to create non-discriminatory um, algorithms. And I'm not really sure what that means because you know, a reporting agency or, or a credit bureau, basically they're not a score model, they're just a, a, an agency that collects data. 
Um, currently, they're just for-profit companies, Experian, Equifax, TransUnion, just about any reporting agency is a for-profit company. They're collecting data and selling that data for profit. That's one of their big uh, revenue streams. Um, and so with, you know, so basically, but they don't really, they're not in the business of, of providing scores. That's really FICO's territory. FICO is, is the pioneer of credit scoring. And there's the, the new kid on the block, which is, which is Vantage scoring. They also are in the business of providing credit scores. Um, so I guess what this, what this means is maybe that this new bureau will also have its own score model, right? And its own score algorithm that will basically be non-discriminatory based. And still unclear what unclear what that means because FICO and, and, and Vantage actually don't even count things like age, race, sex, gender, religion, um, you know, p political views, or, or anything like that. That's not really counted in the score anyway. Um, the score is only going to you know the credit scores FICO and Vantage both mostly are only considering payment history, um, balances, length of credit type of credit you have and any new credit or inquiries, those are the only thing that's really scorable under credit scoring models. And so, or the main credit scoring models that exist. And so this non-discriminatory algorithm, um, it doesn't really have a place in today's society. It's not something that, that score models do anyway or have ever done um, to, to my knowledge. And so, you know, this isn't really new, this isn't really innovative. Um, if they're referring to lenders not being able to be discriminatory against borrowers based on whatever it may be, there's already laws, federal laws that exist to, to prohibit that you know, as well. So again, nothing really new here, but uh, interesting to see how this one will, will play out. Let's see what else this new bureau plans to do. So this new bureau also plans to make home ownership possible under the uh, FHA score or the FHA guidelines. So FHA stands for Federal Housing uh, Administration, and you see FHA mortgages uh, quite a bit. Basically, an FHA mortgage is where the federal government is like backstopping the loan or guaranteeing that loan um, so you know, to the lender so the lender can take on additional risk um, to help people um, you know, buy a house and you know, letting them know that, hey, if it becomes a, a risky loan for you, as long as you lend based on our guidelines, the federal government guidelines, then uh, you know we'll, we'll backstop the loan, we guarantee the loan, right? And, uh, and so basically what that score is right now, the FHA requirement is a 580 FICO score. So with the 580 FICO score, the federal government says you know, to lenders, you know, you can, you know, we approve this type of loan, right? We back this loan, this would be an FHA loan. Um, and so, but what we find today is that even though the minimum score requirement is 580, you know, supported by the federal government, lenders, uh, banks, they still make their own decision. These are called overlays. So they still say, well, that's good for you. That's great that you, you back it at 580, but for us to even originate the loan, we want to see 620 FICO scores or 640 FICO scores. And to us, that makes more sense on risk because at the end of the day, we're still taking on risk too. And so, you know, we need a certain score that, that we agree with that we can account for for certain levels of, of risk. And so, you know, with the new bureau that the Biden administration plans to launch, um, you know, in terms of, you know, either, I don't know, I guess they're going to lower the score requirement for FHA or create a different score version for FHA loans. Not too sure what they mean here, but uh, let's just say that they do lower the score requirement or change the, the, the score model that's being used. Again, it's still going to be up to the lenders to decide if they want to do that or not. Sure, it's good for them to know they have a bigger backstop or you know bigger support from the federal government. But at the end of the day, the the, the, the banks and the, and the lenders are going to be the ones to decide what score that do, do they want to use to originate the, the loan. So. You know, we'll see how this one uh, plays out, but uh, I like where they're going. Sure, I mean, creating more homeowners and more paths to home ownership um, is, is definitely a good thing. It's very tricky though, there's a fine line there. We saw what happened in 2005 and six and seven when, when so many people were getting mortgages, you know, no income, no documentation, no job, you know, type of, type of loans. And of course, you know, we saw what happened with that with the whole mortgage meltdown, right? The, almost the entire economy collapse, the market collapse, you know, with this. And so obviously you don't want to be just giving homes away for free or for, you know, to anybody because you know, obviously we saw, you know, history, you know, 12 years ago, we saw that that creates a problem that creates a big problem. And so you, you need to have a fine line there. I, I agree. 
home ownership um, or people buying houses, it can really change your, your attitude and your outlook towards your finances and towards life. And it's, it's a great thing, but uh, it should not be something that's just given away so easily because if, if it's just like anything in life, anything that's super easy and anybody can do it, there's really not a lot of pride, you know, in that. And it's just a thing that is just kind of like automatic, you know, that you do and that you receive. But, you know, when, when you have to kind of fight your way to, to house, to, to get a house, which is working on your credit, saving some money for, for down payment and things like that, um, it's a little bit more rewarding having to go through all of that and working your way and saving and, and buying time or just kind of delaying that gratification, if you will, until one day when you do have it, you appreciate it a little bit more and you take better care of it. That's just my opinion, of course, my observation, but let's see what else the, this new bureau plans to do. So one of the other things that this new bureau plans to do is to ban landlords and employers from being able to use this bureau to, to get scores to make a decision. And I don't really know where they're going with this because if you're a new bureau, uh, you know, you're planning to start a new company, a new bureau, you kind of want to be very inclusive, right? You want to try to get you know, everybody you know, to the table as much as you can. You want to try to get as many customers to, to be on board with this as much as you can. Um, and so the whole landlord thing, I'm not sure where, you know, the, the, the logic behind it, I get it, maybe, maybe so that way more people will be able to access houses and rental properties. But if we just saw that, you know, if the federal government lowers the FHA score requirement, the banks still decide, hey, 620, 640 is what works for us. You know, landlords are going to be like, well, why am I going to use this bureau to get reports to, to check on tenants? Why am I going to do that if I can't even use the score, if I can't even I can't even get a score to make a decision on whether or not I should rent my house out to someone I don't even know? Right. So I don't, I don't see how this would work. I see landlords saying, nah, to hell with this new bureau. I'm going to continue you know, getting my reports from Equifax or Experian or TransUnion so I can get my scores and I can make a decision you know, for myself. So, you know, this, this doesn't really, I definitely don't see this attracting landlords to be customers to buy reports from this new bureau. Um, this actually could hurt the consumer because let's just say, hypothetically, this new bureau did, you know, was able to somehow do away, like push Equifax, push Experian, push TransUnion, push all the other reporting agencies out of business, which by the way, there's like 30 or 40 different reporting agencies, probably more than that. Um, so if those three went away, just count on counting this, these little guys stepping up and picking up that, that burden and being you know the next big three or the next big two or big four, whoever it may be. But let's just say that the, the federal government said, no, we're just gonna be one bureau, we're the bureau, and uh, we're the ones that supply data to, to everybody, right? Let's say that happens. And let's say landlords couldn't use that or couldn't base their, their decision from this one bureau, from this new government-backed uh, bureau. Then what you would have is you would have landlords just refusing to rent out their properties because why would they do that? Why would they put themselves in a vulnerable position that they're gonna rent their house out to someone that they don't know you know, and they have to, and usually what they have to go off of is credit and finances, right? They're looking at the income, they're looking at the, the credit to determine whether or not, hey, do I wanna rent out my property to this person or not? So if you, if you take the, away that ability, just count on more landlords not renting properties out, which means that there's gonna be a shortage of inventory, shortage of people, places where people can live and rent, um, and then what you may also see is that the ones, the, 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 the people that do rent their houses out, they're going to be so high in demand. Guess what they get to do? They get to raise their rent. They get to raise deposits. Um, you know, I'm sure they're going to probably want three, four months worth of deposits so they're not able to check credit to determine whether or not they can, they should um, allow someone to, to rent that house out. So I really see this, this type of policy being very counterproductive under this new bureau. I really don't see how it would work. Um, and the same thing would even, even would even apply to employers. Employers wouldn't be able to base, you know, hiring decisions on credit. A lot of them don't base it on that solely, but it is part of the hiring process for some folks, right? Some people in financial positions, uh, even some people in government positions trying to get security clearances, they need certain, you know, credit profiles to be able to pass, uh, you know, different backgrounds and, and move up the ranks and get different security clearances in order for that to happen. So you completely do away with that. I don't see how that would, would work for, for some industries, right? Some industries is fine because they probably don't even care about the credit, but some industries do. Some industries, it's important for, for their new employee to have great credit, specifically maybe in government type jobs and even in finance type of, uh, type of jobs. So don't see how this would work, but this is one of the things that the, this new um, bureau plans to do. So let's see what else. So in, in summary here, this new bureau um, will accept alternative data, which isn't new. 
It will um, provide non-discriminatory algorithms, which I mean, that already exists. Um, FICO and Vantage don't, don't have that factored into the algorithm. They don't have ace, uh, age, uh, race, uh, ethnicity, uh, religion, political views, gender. Then that's not even considered in, in the score anyway. Um, you're going to look at landlords not being able to use, you know, this bureau, use this, you know, this new score that this bureau may create um, to make decisions. So that's that's not going to happen. Um, and then, of course, you know, with with the, you know, this new bureau plans to allow home ownership a little bit easier by either lowering the score requirement for FHA loans or changing the score model, which again, that's still going to be based up to the lender because they're the ones taking on most of the risk and they're the ones still originating the loan. So this new bureau that, that again, this is not really like right around the corner. If this were to happen right now, it's just, it's just a talking point. Okay. This is, this is not anywhere. It's not on any kind of legislation for as far as I know. Um, it's not in the house, not in the Senate. It's just, it's just a discussion, just an idea. And so if this idea comes to light, you're talking about maybe four to seven years down the road until this actually will begin to exist in the transition period, you know, to begin from there to being able to collect data and make the Bureau live and stuff like that. So, you know, it's not anything that's coming around the corner. So if you hear someone saying, oh, the bureaus are going away, so, you know, you don't have to worry about your credit anymore. There's just so much misinformation that'll come out from, from things like this. And so I really wanted to make this, uh, this important and, and talk about this so that way, you know, you kind of know what the truth, what's really going on behind the scenes. Of course, do your own research. You don't have to take me at my word. I implore you, do your own research. You'll find out that, you know, the bureaus are not going anyway anytime soon. Um, Biden's not going to destroy the bureaus. Nothing like that's actually going to happen. Not anytime soon, at least. And just, um, you know, just kind of keep an eye on this. Be, be in the know of what's going on around this, um, especially if you're paying attention to your credit. Um, don't be fearful, you know, with this, you know, all things are, are in the end, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be okay. So, so don't worry too much about this today because it's not something that's happening tomorrow. Um, so that is my time today. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Um, this has uh, been very exciting to share with you. If you are um, looking to take your credit to the next level, check out the link in my bio or in the description below. Go to joechavaria.com slash links to learn more. You can schedule a no risk, no uh, obligation credit review with one of my team members. They'll go through your credit report with you item by item, line by line, and they'll teach you how to fix your credit, you know, your credit yourself. And so if you want to do it yourself, they'll tell you exactly how to do that. If you want to hire them to, to do the work for you, then they'll provide you with a free uh, estimate of what it would take to hire them to do all the late work for you. Um, also, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions about what was covered today, drop them in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm Joe Chavaria. This has been another episode of the Joe Credit Show. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.